Hello everyone and welcome to this week's sports podcast. It's um, Friday the 14th of May in the afternoon and we're going to look forward to the forthcoming weekend's action and also look back at what the action's been like during the week. Um, before we start, I think it's only right we should mention um, a couple of items. First of all, the sad passing of former FC Halifax town striker James Dean, um, Dino, who sadly uh, passed away last weekend. Um, Dino was a big part of Halifax Town in the formative years of the revised club um, once we started up again Um, he played for Halifax for three seasons and I think he scored 70 goals in 128 games something like that and um, obviously like I say he played a big role I think he scored 40 goals in one season he was a big character and judging by the tributes I've seen across social media and elsewhere um, it was a very liked, well liked man um, someone who was tough to face on the field but was very much respected and very well liked off the field um, I've seen tributes from some of his former colleagues such as Neil Ross and Steve Payne and Aaron Hardy and Ryan Toulson and that's just a few but obviously there's been many more um, his ex-manager at Chorley Matt Janssen was one of them as well so um, you know, it's sad news. Um, and I also want to mention something uh, very generous happened today. Uh, a friend of mine, Andrew Pinfield, arranged to meet Dino's dad, Duncan, at the Shea. And from his own personal collection, which is signed, I think, by Dino on his match worn shirts, he's donated that shirt. And I think also possibly another one, which um, the groundsman, Graham Osborne, um, may have arranged for Andy. Um, to give to one of Dino's sons, Cole, uh, as a memento um, to show for his time when he played for us at the Shea. So, RIP Dino and sending all the best to um, his dad, Duncan, who we used to see regularly at the games, and also all of his family and his obviously his sons. It's a really tough time for them. Um, I also saw that um, a chap from Warrington, who Dino also played for, um, started, I think it was a Just Giving page, trying to raise £10,000, putting £500 of his own money. And they raised the ten thousands, I think, within the first twenty four hours. So that's a fantastic effort. So well done to them. Um, and a second story, also of a, of a sad nature, is obviously the sad story of the little boy, nine year old boy Jordan Banks, who, who sadly died after being struck by lightning whilst he was playing football in Blackpool on Thursday. Uh, sorry, um, during the week and uh, on Thursday night, he was a Liverpool fan, so it was good to see the Liverpool players. Um, wearing um, the tops before the match with his name and number on the back so um, obviously condolences to all Jordan's family and two not very nice stories to start the week with but obviously we send our best wishes to everyone concerned there on to the actual sport itself now and um, we're going to start with talk about the cricket and this weekend we've got the next round of fixtures in the Halifax Cricket League and um, last weekend was unfortunately a washout due to the Really, really poor weather. I'm not sure the forecast is brilliant for tomorrow either. Let's fingers crossed that we'll get some action in. I'm just going to run through the fixtures we've got in the Halifax Premier League for tomorrow then. So we've got Blackley, and they're at home to Shelf and North Arm Hedgetop. Booth are at home to Bradshaw. Bradshaw will be hoping to um, get back on winning ways after a draw in the last game before the washout. And they've made a really good start. So we're hoping for some more uh, good performances from the likes of Chris Shannon, Simon Collins, and Aaron Buckley. Um, to name a few and then we've got Sorby Bridge are at home to Sorby Bridge Church Institute SBCC, SBCI so a local derby there um, Thornton against Mytham Royd Triangle against Coughplay and Wally against Illingworth St Mary's so some good fixtures there and like I say let's hope the weather plays ball this week and we can get some action in and we see some um, good action plenty of runs and some good wicket hauls as well um, staying with cricket for the time being um, Yorkshire are currently actually in the county championship the second um, in group three at the moment after the first four matches I think they've played now and they're playing at Glamorgan today and it's day two day one was washed out yesterday but Yorkshire chose to bowl and they've managed to bowl out Glamorgan in the last few minutes for 149 so that's a really good start and um, hopefully you can take some more take another victory from this game and put pressure on Lancashire who currently top the group and reach the finals at the end of the season so come on Yorkshire let's keep it going um, okay, so that's what Yorkshire are up to at the moment. Moving on to football, and the big event this weekend is the FA Cup final tomorrow at Wembley. Quarter past five, I think the kickoff is. 
and it's Chelsea versus Leicester. Um, personally, I'll be a bit rooting for Leicester simply because of the fact that Vardy will be playing for Leicester. So good luck to him. Hope he can score in a cup final. That'd be nice. And also, as Brendan Rodgers pointed out, it'd be nice for the um, chairman who died tragically in the fire and the accident with the helicopter at the stadium top. They want to dedicate to him. So it'd be nice if he could win. Um, but both teams would probably consider um, their league meeting the following Tuesday is more important um, because the Premier League race for Europe and the Champions League spot and Europa League spots are really hotting up now. And because Liverpool beat Manchester United 4-2 last night at Old Trafford, it means that if they win all their games, they're going to be guaranteed to pass either Leicester or Chelsea. So that puts them in a good spot for qualifying themselves, but it makes it tough for Leicester or Chelsea. Um, so some big games coming up there. Um, this weekend, before the Tuesday night game, which is quarter past eight between um, Leicester and Chelsea, um, we've got um, big games for West Ham at Brighton on Saturday evening. Um, that's eight o'clock, I think. And then you've got Sunday lunchtime, Tottenham are playing Wolves. And then after that, we've got um, Liverpool are away to West Brom. So they're important games. And we've also got a game for Everton as well. I can't remember they're playing, but Everton have got a game on Sunday as well. So they're the big games this weekend. So it's hotting up in those positions now. Let's see exactly whether uh, Liverpool can uh, steal one of those spots off Chelsea or Leicester. And then whether West Ham can hang in there. And whether it'll be Tottenham, Everton or possibly Arsenal now for the seventh place in the league. So to get the last spot in the Europa League or... Possibly the Europa comp that new, new co competition, the Conference League, which runs alongside the Europa League on a Thursday evening. So, you know, be interested to see who gets that seventh slot and how that new tournament works because I believe that's coming in um, as of next season. So, keep an eye on developments for that new competition. Not sure how many people will actually inter be interested in it though. I think they probably see it as um, a poor man's version of the Cup Winners' Cup for people that've got memories that go back that far. Um, so. That's what's happening with the Premier League. Halifax, FC Halifax Town have an important game tomorrow. Um, they're trying to keep the playoff, hope, playoff hopes alive. We're down to 7th at the moment. And Wrexham were thinking of probably ninth now. I think Bromley are 8th. Um, the results didn't go too well for the Shaman during the week. All the main rivals for the playoffs actually won their games during the week. So it's put us down from 5th to 7th. And Wrexham are 9th. I've got a game in hand and only a point behind. So it's imper imperative that we win our games we've got left. So we've got Dagenham tomorrow. We've got Maidenhead away the following Saturday. And then we've got the big crunch game. Well, it could be a big crunch game against Chesterfield last day of the season where they both may need points to, to seal um, a spot in the playoffs. And um, I'm looking forward to going to that game as fans and as a season ticket holder. And fans uh, allowed back in the grounds for that last two rounds of games. So Maidenhead will have fans in their game at home to Halifax. And we'll have fans at home to Chesterfield on that day at last day of the season. So I'm looking forward to that. Maybe with a bit of excitement and maybe a bit of trepidation, depending on how things pan out before that game. So that is something, hopefully, to look forward to. OK, so moving on from the football now. And Monday sees, sees the start of the Speedway season here in England. And the first match live on Eurosport is Monday evening. It's on from 7pm. 7, 7 so if you've ever seen Speedway before and you're at loose end on Monday evening, tune into Eurosport and you'll be able to watch the live match between Bellevue Aces and Sheffield Tigers from the uh, National Speedway Stadium in Manchester. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it pans out as this, this is Euro, Eurosport's first um, foray into um, covering British Speedway in terms of domestic Speedway anyway. And um, I believe that the commentators and uh, summarisers will be similar to what they've been before. Kelvin Tate and Nigel Pearson will both be involved. Um, but they have their own uh, pre presenter called Abby, and she's the person looking after the programme. So they're also going to be doing some analysis after their meeting into um, you know, how it went and what the technicalities of it are. So it may be of some interest for people not seen before to find out a little bit more about the sport as well. So 7 till 10 Monday evening, if you want to watch that, it'd be good to see that for people who've not uh, seen Speedway regularly before. And also for regular fans, they'll want to tune in and watch that, no doubt. I believe they're going to be giving updates from the other meeting on the evening as well in the in the Premiership, which is um, Kingsland versus Ipswich. Um, so if you're a fan of Kingsland and Ipswich, you might want to keep updated on it as well. So it's worth keeping your eye on the coverage for that reason as well. Okay. Um, next subject for this week is going to be Rugby League. 
I've not really given much coverage to the Super League or to the um, Championship so far. Um, I've not really got a lot of interest in the Super League. Uh, but obviously, Halifax are in the Championship and I've been keeping an eye on the results. And they had a really good result on Sunday when he won 36 0 away to Dewsbury. They've had a bit of an up and down start to the season, having beaten the London Broncos convincingly at home. Um, and having not really been defeated by Bradford Bull by one point at Oddsall. Uh, sorry, not Oddsall. Um, at Dewsbury, funnily enough. Um, they're the three good games, but they've also been beaten 34-44 by Toulouse, who got me one of the favourites for the league championship, and suffered a surprise defeat at Oldham, which is really disappointing. Lose 16 to to Oldham, who you'd think are probably going to be near the bottom. Um, so it's a bit of a mixed bag, and they were ho probably hoping to build on that this weekend, but unfortunately the game's been called off against Sheffield Eagles because Sheffield have had a COVID outbreak, so they're unable to fulfil the fixture. So it's a bit of a blow, but. They're doing okay out of the Pampers at the moment, so they'll be looking to kick on from where they were and climb up the table and get into those playoff places. So, fingers crossed for them that they can improve in the next few games and we'll keep you up to date of how they get on um, in the forthcoming weeks. Okay, so I think that's about all the main things I want to cover now. Any other news I can think of? Um, boxing, not a big fan of boxing, um, but we've got um, the date for the big fight now between... Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. It's the 14th of August and it's going to be in Saudi Arabia. That's probably not going to go down too well with some people um, with, respect, with regards to the venue. I'm not sure it's the right place to be having it, but money talks, doesn't it? It's not always the right thing, but that's where it's going to be held. Um, with regards to the Champions League final, the venue has been decided for the football Champions League final. Chelsea against Man City will now be in Porto on the 29th of May. Um, it was touted but it would be held at Wembley but due to certain um, restrictions because of the COVID um, pandemic it was felt that the best venue would actually be Porto so it's going to be in Porto um, the Europa League final on the 26th of May is still going to be in Gdansk and Manchester United fans will be able to attend uh, the Poles have waived some of their quarantine rules so make it a little bit easier for the fans um, they won't have to quarantine when they get there but they'll have to quarantine when they get back um, just going back to the Champions League final, the Man City and Chelsea fans uh, will basically be not allowed to go anywhere near any of the residents of Portugal in case of getting flight, flown in on charter flights, getting a coach straight to the ground, watching the game, getting back on the coach, going back to the airport and flying home all on the same day. So it might spoil the day for them, but it's a, it's a case of do we allow fans or not? And if you've got any comment on that or you feel... You know, you want to contribute any comments about how you feel about that, just uh, let me know below in the comments. Okay, so I think that's all I want to talk about for today. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's um, updates. And I'll be back again um, with more details next week. So until then, have a good week and bye for now. <laughs>